Hey there guys and girls, before we get into this video, if you wish to support me on Patreon, you can now do so. Go into the description below, find the link, and I hope you become a Patreon. The only things intimidating about the 2005 Batman Begins the Game is the absolute lack of replayability and the camera that wants to ruin your day. I remember going to Roger's video around the corner, which was a Canadian blockbuster, and yes, we also did have blockbuster, and renting this game after watching Batman Begins for the first time back in 2005. I think I was in junior high. It was finally back in stock one weekend, so I rented it out and strapped in for some Batman goodness, still high off the movies. Released one day before the movie bearing the same name, this game is an average superhero movie tie-in game, and it's only average for the nostalgia factor. I can assure you, if you've never played this game before, you would have no love for it. Leagues better than games like Superman Returns from 2006, but it is nothing close to the later Arkham series. There is not even a comparison there. Developed by Eurocom and published by EA in conjunction with Warner Brothers Interactive Ent Entertainment and DC Comics, there was a Game Boy Advanced, GameCube, PS2, and Xbox uh, editions as well. There's also a PSP version planned, but due to the lukewarm reception of the game, it was canned. The GBA title is actually a pretty decent game. Like most games from that era on the GBA, it is a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Although it can be difficult at some spots, especially with the jumping and the wall jumping, it's still a solid, decent game. It's quick, it's easy to play, and it's completely Batman. It still follows the uh, story plot, movie plot, that the big console games have as well. So this game is basically the movie with some minor changes to the ending, but it's longer, although not by much, topping it out at about six and a half hours, well for me, uh, I really seem to burn through this game. I don't know, maybe it was really just me because I've had other people that say that it took them eight hours, some people longer. Um, this game has very little to no replayability, which is a shame because it does employ some pretty sweet gameplay mechanics. Uh, Batman Begins also reprises the roles of all the characters, except for Gary Oldman. And due to the less than stellar reaction uh, this game got, there was a second game planned, The Dark Knight, but it was cancelled. The next Batman game in the chronological order was Lego Batman, which was pretty fun, but really, I have yet to meet a Lego game that I do not enjoy. Arkham Asylum was the next non-Lego Batman game there was, uh, and it is the game that this game should have been. There's vast exploration, dynamic combat, cool characters, fun gameplay, good dialogue, good story, and overall most of the Arkham series is what this game should have or could have been. So gameplay wise, the first thing I want to note guys is I am running this on the emulator, the PCSX2 version 1.4.0 with my own setting options for my build and for the way the game likes to run. Every game is different just like every system, uh, so if there's, it doesn't look how it would look on your system if you were to run an, the emulator, that's because sometimes things are different for every computer and I did what I could to get the game running in a functional capacity. Something is left to be desired with the overall graphics of this game. While not the worst looking PS2 game out there, it is definitely not winning any awards in the graphics department. It feels like most of the game is movie cutscenes, which is definitely true. Most of the game is told through the movie cutscenes. Um, main character models look decent with a good amount of detail. Batman, of course, is the most detailed model throughout the game. The NPCs consist of maybe nine or ten different models, just repeated. Even then, I might be 
exaggerating that number. I didn't exactly get to count the bad guys I was beating up because you rarely don't count the bad guys you're beating up. Uh, but they're just cannon fodder for the bat, so it doesn't really matter. Animations are okay at best half the time. Climbing is off, especially going up and down ladders. The fighting hitboxes are off. The facial animations aren't horrible. They're, they're decent. Somebody clearly put time into this game. But although the lip flaps don't match half the time, and uh, like I said, the hitboxes vary with the fighting, and you can definitely see that when you're fighting. And it's, it's a little frustrating when you get a cheap shot and it kills you. The combat in this game is basic, early PS2 button mashing. I shouldn't even say early PS2, it's just basic button mashing, which is fine. I love a good button masher, but it's not as refined as the newer games, especially if for a Batman game. And as I said previously, the hitbox detection makes it spotty and hard to land combos and good blows. There is no smooth flowing combat either. Although it does have finishing moves that are pretty okay sometimes, especially the fear toxin ones. Uh, they're pretty random to get. Although this isn't focused on combos, it's mo mainly just beating up the bad guys till they don't get up anymore. It would be nice to have smoother combat and have it flow better instead of I'm punching this guy, I'm punching this guy, but I'm still getting hit in the back from the other guy and he's going to kill me because I can't turn around fast enough and I can't... My lock-on is weird. The auto-lock is just frustrating. You can't see around you, it zooms kind of in, so not quite an over-the-shoulder, but so close that you can't really see who's behind you and it often leads to you getting hit by the bad guys while you're fighting the camera to try and see more because the camera is there to ruin your day and just wants to make everything as difficult as possible. You also can't use most gadgets in combat like you can in the Arkham series. L later on, the only ones you can really use are grenade types, so smoke and flashbangs, and then that's it. You can't tap toss no batarangs, you can't lay explosive gel on the floor, nothing like that. Those along with health kits are the only in-game pickups you can get. I will give it credit for some of the stealth takedowns. Uh, you know, if somebody's near you and they hear you take down or, you know, they're in the vicinity, they will react to that, which, while not groundbreaking, Metal Gear Solid did all that. Every There's thousands of other games that did it. For a game that was, you could see was rushed out, it's uh, more than I thought it, it would have as a kid. If you get seen by the red dot guys, which means the armed guys, it is instant death. There is no chance of getting back into a dark place because you can't do the rafters thing in this game. You can't be up high. Uh, they'll still see you. There's no chance of escape and you barely get anywhere. It's just, it's really frustrating <laughs> to deal with that quite frequently. And I wasn't even playing on hard. I was playing on normal. The game does have a unique system involving intimidation, which would later be adopted into the Arkham series. Uh, certain gadgets are designed to frighten enemies during combat, and there are, what do you call them, action events or action plat things? Kind of like a bond moment in 007 where you can hit it and it will make the enemies drop their guns and disarm them and then you can go in and beat them up. Uh, much like we'd see in the later Arkham games, it, it's there, it's good intimidation system, it's just not as good as it could be. Also, like much of the later Batman games, there's an element of stealth and problem solving, but unlike uh, some other games, there's only one way to solve problems here, and you do it in the game sequence or you don't do the puzzles at all. The Tumblr actually handles well and is probably the best part of the game, truly. Although there are only two missions involving the Tumblr, which, you know, kind of sucks. I do enjoy driving around in the Tumblr, although it is still a linear mission. You do, it's something very different from what you've been doing for the past two, three hours, give or take. Although 
they are spaced out well so it doesn't feel like you're overusing the tumbler. I would have loved to see maybe another mission or um, a side mission. Well, this game doesn't have side missions, it's all linear, but maybe another mission or two with the tumbler would have been awesome. I know it's following the movie, but they took enough liberties with the end of the game, they could have taken some liberties in the middle of the game as well. Uh, the missions only consist of getting here to there and ram the bad guys along the way. It's a very burnout, takedown kind of style of gameplay, and it has a surprisingly se good sense of speed. It's not too fast, it's not too slow, the tumbler controls relatively well, surprisingly, and it's a... Uh, I will say my favorite part of the game. So the sounds of the game. Most of the sounds or most of the music you will hear is straight ripped from the movie. Most of everything is ripped from the movie sound wise. Uh, the Or a similar grand orchestral soundtrack with a little variations in here during tense moments but nothing really it's a forgettable soundtrack it's forgettable almost in every single way uh, other sounds can be delayed sometimes the hits sounds are delayed or some are noticeably compressed and they sound a little weird especially some of the NPCs talking it sounds sometimes it sounds like uh, I don't know if you guys have ever played bully especially on PC I don't I haven't played bully on console in forever but you'll hear a lot of compression and a lot of weird sounds like people recorded in their bathroom, stuff like that. Sometimes it does sound like that in this game as well. And I know my sound is good on the emulator because, well, sound is one of the things you don't really have to change, it's just graphics on an emulator. The driving soundtrack though, I will say is a bit weird in place of the game. It's a bit, it's techno. It really is just a weird house techno mix. It really has no place in the game. It more belongs in like a Need for Speed or some other kind of racing fast arcadey type game. It feels out of place for the rest of the game where the movie soundtrack is dominant or some facsimile of it. I wouldn't have mind maybe a little bit of the movie soundtrack or you know good old tumbler, tumbler noises or maybe a little rock track in the back. That would have been great instead of this weird techno mix. The voice acting was just uninspired, but not horrible, because it was the entire cast from the movies. Well, it wasn't horrible, at least for some characters. It definitely sounds like some of these guys had a contractual obligation instead of wanting to do the game. Ross Al Ghul. Ross Al Ghul is dead. Push. Most of the lines are from the movies, although everything was recorded new, or it was supposed to be recorded new, that's what it says. Who knows if that was actually the case, but some are exclusive new lines for the game, and you can really tell when it's the case. There's a little bit of sound difference. Um, it also felt, I don't know if they did the game first and then the movie second, but it also felt like this was the first time a lot of them read their lines, or read certain parts of the script or maybe they didn't remember like I said I don't know what the development period for this was but it couldn't have been super long but it also there was work put into it because it's not a terrible game it just hasn't aged well at all so there's a lot of stuff in this game the overall gameplay mechanics there's just a lot to unpack it felt really like I was fighting the camera a lot. The camera wants to be over his shoulder, but you gotta look around and it is not a camera that wants to look around. It wants to snap back or it wants to roll back. It wants to show you the way it wants to show you, but the way you're trying to look, it wants to fight you for that. Sometimes you'll be looking at something and turn and then you'll end up in a building. Like the camera will clip through that. It's weird. It, it makes a lot of sense when I need to jump to something clearly in front of me. It's almost like a Bubsy 3D. Uh, it, it's just frustrating, the camera, I guess. And it made me miss a couple jumps sometimes because I was fighting with it. While platforming isn't too bad, the puzzles are hand-holdingly simple, almost insultingly so at some times. Uh, which is, you know, a little disappointing since it is such a linear game. 
I would have loved a little variation, a little less hand-holding, a little more, what do I do now? And I have to figure out for myself, I am the world's greatest detective after all, or I'm playing as the world's greatest detective. They don't give you really a chance to figure it out for yourself, it's mostly pushing on the d-pad until it snaps to the next action thing that you're supposed to do, and then you just push the corresponding button to do it. It's, it's frustrating. When you solve a puzzle, like I said, it almost has these like 007 game moments where it slows down, it shows you figuring out the puzzle and disarming the guards and then beating them up and making them scared and all that. The camera wants to look at what it wants to look at. I cannot re reiterate this enough, but sometimes I need to look elsewhere. There's also no sprint. To me, personally, I hate games with no sprint. It's annoying considering there's a lot of running from point one to point two and then back to point one sometimes. So I would just love to have a good old sprint and make that trip just a little bit more faster. There's no upgrading or leveling or any kind of progression system in the game. Your suit also does not take damage like it does in later games. And the one thing you really want to have in Batman is gliding. That has to be nailed down. The gliding in the cape feel. This game has no actual need or use aside from making like maybe five or six jumps. The gliding doesn't feel satisfying or is it really useful? You, you don't glide from building to building. You don't jump from high points to glide unless you're trying to glide to an enemy or to something. It, it's, it's pretty much useless, the gliding in this game. Uh, of course, there's locking, lock picking mini games. Uh, there's also a hacking mini game, which are both just time padding because they are slow, they are time consuming, and if you mess up, it starts you all the way from the beginning. Uh, they aren't cool, gotta have a cool factor in there. Although not the worst lock picking mini games I've ever had to do, or hacking mini games I've ever had to do in my life, they are definitely just like oof. On the plus side, there are no in-game world collectibles, which means no Riddler trophies. Thank God. The map design, although it's thought out, it's not well thought out. There's a lot of backtracking and it's empty. There's, there's completely nothing to do in the game world except fly through it. I think that's why it only took me six and a half hours to play this. They could have filled it with some kind of collectibles, some easter eggs. Uh, a bit more maybe thought out design instead of having to backtrack a lot, but one corridor will look like the next and it's very dull after a while So you kind of zone out when you're playing which isn't a bad thing because there's no collectible So you're not gonna miss anything. It's easy very easy to get a hundred percent in this game uh, the, the linearity the linearity of the game uh, Really draws attention to the fact that there's nothing in the game it's a hardwire move to check every single corner in case there's a goodie or a drop, but there's truly nothing in this game. And once you realize that there's nothing to collect, nothing to do, you just blow right through everything you just zoom through. I wonder how fast I could finish it now that I, my, it's in my brain to not check the corners. You do unlock time attack modes as you play through and the ability to replay uh, the tumblr missions again if you watch remember there's only two of them so that gets old after a while there's also a gallery of fear which ha houses the animated models of various people batman has fought throughout the game as well as an alternative costume selection screen that has four other batman costumes along with all that you unlock you unlock the movie clips interviews from the movie interviews about the game and everything is unlocked with a single playthrough. There's really no replayability unless you want to go back and speedrun it or you want to go back and play the Tumblr missions. Other than that, this game is pretty much dead on arrival after you complete it once. So, at the end of it, this game is a lot like any movie tie-in game you can get out there. It's quickly made to cash in while the movie was coming out. I mean, it was released one day before the movie, so technically, if you're able to get your hands on this, you already knew what was gonna happen in the movie, more or less, because the cutscenes are all in there. You can pretty much watch all the cutscenes together and you've watched a summarized version of the movie. 
it's not bad that it's overly short it it's a one and done it doesn't overstay its welcome but especially now that we have the Arkham series out it's it's what could have been you're always the what could be like ride to hell retribution that game what it could have been but then we got this this is a monotonous uh, game it's majorly I played it for a nostalgia trip to see if you know I really did have rose-colored glasses on and I gotta say I did a bit uh, more than anything I would say go play the Arkham series now uh, this game does a lot but Arkham does it way better the combat is frustrating the gameplay is uninspired the story watch the movie if you want the story even though the ending is slightly different go watch the movie and uh, if I wanted to watch this many cutscenes, I would really go watch the movie. Personally, now that I've played it, I don't see myself ever coming back to play it again. It's a blast from my gaming past that should have stayed in the past. It feels like a default game that could have been any stealth adventure game or any superhero tie-in game. It could have been a, a shitty Metal Gear Solid or a discount, I don't know, Splinter Cell or something like that. But if you, I would say if you want to play this, play it, but don't expect anything out of it. I don't even know if you can find copies of it anymore. I'm pretty sure you can find copies of it somewhere. Play it, but don't expect too much. Uh, this one is going to have to be a pass and uh, oh, not a waste of time, but a disappointment of my time. So that's the end of the video guys. If you want to support me on my Patreon, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can do so now. Or if you just want to check it out, see what kind of perks there are, go check it out. Things are subject to change, so if you guys want to add some stuff or do some different stuff, uh, definitely open to that. And thank you guys for your support, thanks for watching till the end, and I'll see you guys in the next video.